Capture the Flag in GimKit's probably one of the most exciting games uh, that my students um, like to play in class. However though, there's always one frustration point with the game is that there are always those kids that like to stay in the circle, hold on to the flag and wait until the game's over with or until class expires and they win the game. GimKit Creative adds a twist or at least creates an opportunity for that twist. And here's my example with this. So let's say we have a person sitting in the, the flag zone and Instead of, you know, just sitting there waiting till the game expires, you can click on a button and purchase a sentry that will essentially knock out a person that's idly waiting there. Now, this is a big twist to GimKit Creative and especially Capture the Flag. Uh, there's always pros and cons to every situation, but I think it is an interesting idea or an interesting wrinkle into Capture the Flag. Let's show you how to make it. All right, your main ingredients for today's setup, if you will, are zones, wiring, a button, a sentry, a vending machine, uh, spawns of course, flags if you want to incorporate those, uh, and an item spawner just to show you how it functions. All right, your first step is to place down your button. Next, you wanna add in a vending machine. I would prefer just to keep the game kind of organized and neat to have the vending machine outside of the zone or outside of the area that you uh, can play and capture the flag, but that's up to you. Next, we're gonna add a wire between the button itself and the vending machine. That way, whenever we press the button, it's going to attempt a purchase. All right, if we head over to vending machine now, uh, this is kind of the setup as to what do you want the currency to be used in order to purchase the sentry? Do you wanna get anything out of the vending machine? Uh, you don't have to. All you can have the reward being is just getting the, the sentry. Uh, so how to set this up? Uh, the required item, since this is capture the flag, we are gonna make this energy. The required amount is really up to you, but if you wanna make the sentry a powerful thing and capture the flag, you need to make it expensive. Uh, making it like a thousand energy, if you're earning a thousand energy per question, makes the demand for a sentry pretty low. It's pretty easy to get. Uh, so for this video, we're gonna make it 50,000 energy. That's gonna take you a little bit of time and especially potentially some teamwork. Again, I'm gonna leave it as not giving a granted item. You can make it give you something back if you want. There's a lot of twists and turns that you can add into GimKit Creative, but again, for the video, we're just gonna leave it not granting any items. All right, next up, we're gonna add in our sentry. If you click on the sentry, it's gonna give you a variety of things. And again, I have a video on kind of some basics to sentry as do other uh, YouTube channels. Uh, you can choose the gadget that you wanna choose uh, that they can use during the game. The most important ones that I'm going to highlight on are the sentry team. If you leave it as this, it's not gonna play for team one or team two or team whatever, it's gonna be essentially a bot against any human playing the game. If you wanna buy a sentry that is working for you, you need to change the team that it's playing for. So for this example, we'll use team number one. That's the first thing for this. The second thing is to head over to difficulties. If you wanna make the sentry a valuable piece and capture the flag, you're gonna have to increase the accuracy. Medium itself is really weak. Uh, so going from high or very high, it could drastically increase the value of the sentry itself. All right, those are the main two things that we're gonna change with the sentry for now. If you wanna add launchers into every character and capture the flag, which would be another really cool wrinkle into the game, uh, you can always manipulate uh, the respawn durations of how long you want the sentry to be knocked out for, or if you want to make it only brought back through purchasing of energy. All right, our next step is we're going to wire the vending machine to the sentry. That way, whenever we purchase an item with our energy, it's going to activate the sentry for us. Now, initially, I thought I was done. I thought it was good to go because if it activates the sentry upon purchase, that means that it's currently deactivated, right? Unfortunately, it is not. So if we start this game and I have my test character run over, you're gonna notice that it starts shooting at the test character, which is not what we want to do. We want to have the vending machine uh, be used to purchase the sentry, not just have it already spawned in the game. Also, a really quick side tangent. If you are a person that likes to keep the game looking neat, uh, I am making the vending machine invisible. That way, when you're in game, you're not seeing the vending machine, you're just focusing on the button being the act of purchasing the sentry. All right, so how do we deactivate the sentry. Uh, that's gonna be through the use of zones. So if you type in zones, it's gonna give you options. You are choosing just the baseline one, not capture the flag or tag, it's just the zone itself. And what you're going to do is I'm heading to the top left-hand corner. I'm gonna place it down. I'm gonna click on the zone itself again. I'm going to change the size of it. 
I'm gonna have it cover the entire map and I'll explain why here in a second. All right, my zone is covering the whole map. Why do I have it like that? Uh, the idea is that whenever I start the game, the moment I walk, the moment I move, uh, the moment I'm existing on the map itself, the sentry is immediately going to be deactivated. Again, we want to have it be purchasable, not just randomly in the game. All right, kind of the final steps with this is to link these two things, not through wiring, but through channels. So what we can do is we can click on the sentry itself, head over to channels, and it's going to say, hey, deactivate sentry when receiving on, and we can call this really whatever you want. This have to be linking to the zone itself. We'll call this Sentry 1. All right, then if we head over to the zone itself, we head to Channels. When players enter zone, transmit on Sentry 1. Now these two are connected, and so whenever the game starts, you're going to notice that the Sentry isn't there. All right, so if I start the game up, you're going to notice, lo and behold, the Sentry is no longer activated. Uh, how do I activate it? If I collect some energy, and again, this could be through just any way of how you're setting it up for capture the flag. I head over to the button, I interact with it, and voila, now you have an activated sentry. If I run over with my test, you're gonna notice that it's now launching and shooting at the test, the opposing team with this. All right, the very last thing, if you want to add in more of these to the game, uh, you can do this quite easily. Again, you can check out my videos on kind of the more editing side of GameKit Creative, not just working with devices. You can highlight over everything that you've just created. You can hover and click M to move. And now you can change the location that you want these sentries to be at. So depending on where your capture the flag zones are at, maybe you want to have a sentry kind of covering a really valuable vending machine that gives out a really cool item. Uh, but you can always highlight. You can click M to move. You can click C to copy to duplicate. And now I have sentries in multiple locations. You could have them stacked on top of each other if you really want to have it be a difficult um, task to get the flag itself. But this is just some ideas that you can go with uh, for this. But again, this is just an idea that you can take and run with in your own GimKit creative maps. All right, that's how you can add in a vending machine that will grant you sentry in capture the flag. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or you want me to try out or make a video on a certain topic, by all means, leave it in the comment section below. Again, these videos are really just to spark an idea. It's not a concrete set of rules of how you have to follow something. Take it, learn from it, make it into your own thing uh, and run with the idea. If you're going to have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.